Well, in 1973, EMI Records held a press conference to debut Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon at the London Planetarium. Fifty years later, that album is recognized as one of the greatest of all time and now has its own show at Chicago's Adler Planetarium. With that, we bring in our friend from the Adler, Senior Director of Theaters and Visualization, Mike Smale. Thank you for being here. Uh, how does this show... You're so welcome, Brad. Thanks. Yeah. How does this show uh, compare to, to Pink Floyd's first show in, in a planetarium as well as some of their, their past shows? I mean, they were always showmen uh, to the nth degree, but this has got to be something cool. How, comparatively, how's it going to flow? Oh, absolutely. It's 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 so it's been 50 years. So if you wind your wind the clock back to 1973, they did that first kickoff event listening party for the album at the London Planetarium. That was a time where you might have a, a turntable on your planetarium console for music. You might have mono. Maybe you had stereo. Uh, what we have now is uh, much better sound systems. We have a 15 2 surround system, uh, newly remixed version of the album that we'll be playing along with the show. And then the visuals are just night and day different. So the image behind me is a, a screenshot from uh, part of the show. What we can do now is any sort of uh, computer generated graphic, any sort of digital content, what you're seeing playing, we can put that on the dome all around you. It's 180 degrees, it's in front of you, it's behind you, it's all around, uh, really immerses the audience into the show. So it's a, a night and day difference compared to, to any previous sort of Pink Floyd planetarium experience. Yeah, I could imagine probably 50 years ago that experience might be a record player with a uh, night with no clouds outside. Um, so I can imagine this would be something uh, particularly more spectacular. Can you walk us through the process of creating the show uh, with the songs varying and powerful topics? Uh, how were the visuals decided? Sure. So uh, Pink Floyd uh, initiated the conversation about starting this show about two years ago with the International Planetarium Society, which is kind of a, a trade group for professional planetariums. And they came with a simple goal of wanting to make a dark side of the moon show, but they really wanted it to be space focused. They wanted uh, the moon, obviously. They wanted the planets. They wanted flying through the stars. Uh, and then they brought in their uh, creative collaborators, uh, Aubrey Powell and the team at Hypnosis, who created the, the album cover art for Dark Side of the Moon and many other Pink Floyd works. Uh, and they worked along with a, a creative uh, sort of planetarium dome production team in the UK to put together the visuals for this show. And then the album as a whole, it's, so it's, it's 10 tracks, but it's, it's really produced as an album. It's produced as a piece. So it's kind of strange to think of it in individual pieces. But uh, each song does have its own sort of visual story. And it's a, a tale of human exploration. So the visuals start uh, of just over 50 years ago with the uh, hum first human landing on the surface of the moon. And then it kind of moves through uh, current space exploration. And then without giving away too much, teases out a little bit of a potential future uh, solar system exploration by the time you get to the end of it. Yeah, sounds a little trippy too. It is more of a sympathy. Uh, it sounds trippy too. It is more of a, a symphony. Uh, Pink Floyd's uh, "Dark Side of the Moon," uh, fifty years ago. So, uh, experientially, a couple adjectives. What what you've seen it? I'm sure. What what are fans going to take away? Oh, I think fans are uh, really. What's what's great about it is it's it's going to be appropriate for anybody and everybody fans, the the diehards, the folks who, you know, have the record on their shelf, listen to it all the time. Uh, they're gonna, in addition to just hearing it in a new way, uh, they're gonna, for the, for the for, again, the first time in a sort of planetarium experience, be able to see uh, sort of visual artistic vision uh, from the band, approved by the band. This is, there have been many Pink Floyd planetarium shows over the years, but this is the only one that uh, Pink Floyd and their creative team have actively been involved in the creation of. So they're gonna see, uh, uh, some of that that classic Pink Floyd uh, Floyd iconography, pyramids, prisms, rainbows, uh, throughout the show, um, and again, just a, a, an experience uh, unlike any I can guarantee any of them have experienced before. Yeah, you guys going to open up some kind of pop up cannabis shop for this thing, or uh, did you not get the <laughs> licensing from the city? 
Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, things are legal in Illinois now that weren't legal in Illinois 50 years ago. Yeah. Uh, no smoking inside the Adler Planetarium, though. That is a, that is a house rule of the venue. Yeah, there's plenty of other ways, from what I hear. Um, but thank you, Mike. We appreciate your time. 50 years later, uh, with your background and profession, um, why is it still relevant? You know, you, you touched on a word earlier, you kind of described it as a, a symphony, and I think that really fits in. It's it's one of those, it's one of the best-selling albums of all time. So for the last 50 years, that, I mean, there were folks that discovered it right when it came out. There have been new generations of, of people discovering the album over the past few decades, and it's still been around. Again, there have been Pink Floyd shows playing in planetariums for the last 40 years or so. Uh, so that's done, uh, that's helped to kind of generate a, a cultural kind of undercurrent of, of awareness and understanding. And the, what I think is really great about it is I think it's a, it's a 43 minute piece of music. Mm -hmm. uh, it flows, it's, it's dynamic. You have a, a, a good balance of, of instrumental and rock and slow and fast and hard and quiet. Um, and that makes it really, really approachable. It's, it's mm -hmm. easier for someone, even someone who's like, ah, I don't, you know, I don't really listen to Pink Floyd. It's not, it's not my thing. I, you know, I'm not a, not a, you know, psychedelic rock kind of person. Uh, the album itself is so such a, a an easy, solid, and, and mm -hmm. just beautiful entry point. Yeah. Um, and so many moods and flavor palettes. I mean, it's queen. Everybody's going to, you're going to find something you, in there. You get you something. Yeah. Well, absolutely. 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 You'll find something in there for you. Uh, well, if you didn't get the pop up shop uh, for the cannabis, uh, you should have some snacks or something at con concessions, from what I hear. So just FYI on that. Uh, Mike Smale, director of theaters and visualization at the Adler Planetarium. We really look forward to the show and uh, we really appreciate you joining us on this Friday morning, Mike. Yeah, so welcome. Thanks for having me. And we hope to see you all at the show. Okay, tickets are on sale now. You can find more information on our website, cbschicago.com.